Here at the Royal Berkshire Hospital in Reading, we have 17 beds on the intensive care unit. And within acute medicine, we have a large bed base of about 75 beds. So the HMU ward, it's a quite a diverse group of patients we get coming through. So it's a four bedded unit and we take pretty much any patient who just requires more close observation or monitoring that you wouldn't be able to provide on a ward. We brought in humidified nasal high flow therapy about four years ago now. It was introduced as a trial to the higher monitoring unit area. We had a group of patients on relatively high flows of wall oxygen. We didn't feel that this was being adequately humidified and warmed it was difficult for the patients to tolerate. Over time, we introduced it as a therapy on the intensive care unit as well. There comes a point if lungs are too damaged where what you're able to deliver through the normal oxygen tap on the wall isn't enough. And traditionally, the next step up from that would be intubating a patient and ventilating them on a ventilator. This has quite a significant morbidity associated with it because it damages the lungs and it's a resort that we only transition to if necessary. With the high flow nasal cannula, the EVA2 unit, what we're able to do is deliver a higher concentration of oxygen that you would otherwise traditionally be able to deliver from the taps on the wall. And as a result, there have been some cases where we've been able to stave off intubating someone and actually keep them awake throughout their illness. If you're able to stave off a few patients being intubated, then that's a very big saving in terms of needing to put someone in intensive care. People don't necessarily need it because they need loads more oxygen. They might just need more flow, and that's another big difference. We can deliver a high flow of air to make breathing much more comfortable for them. It will also humidify the oxygen therapy that they're receiving, and that means that any functional activity, such as getting out of bed, should be a lot easier, which is really important because the earlier we can get them out of bed and moving, the quicker they will recover. All my nurses are trained to use um, high flow. It's easily used, it's very easy to set up. So you have the EVO2 and then you have the packaging that sits in the machine. Um, and then you also hang the water up with it and connect all the, the wiring. And then it's delivered through nasal pumps. Confusion is particularly difficult to manage in hospital. If you have let's say, an elderly patient with a degree of confusion who is offered non-invasive ventilation and they try to remove the mask because it's uncomfortable. That's very hard for nursing staff, actually. It feels like you're doing the wrong thing for them. Patients complain that it's claustrophobic, it's something in their face the whole time. And the amount of times I walk past the unit and you see a mask that's been pulled over their head just because they just don't want it, they don't like it there. Whereas with the nasal cannula in, it's a lot smaller device on the patient's face. It's a lot more comfortable for the patients, so they can talk a lot better. It just helps you feel a bit more human. Patients don't like to go back onto a face mask once they've had the nasal high flow, because the nasal high flow is more comfortable. So if there's something that we can provide them that makes them more comfortable, then that should make that time a lot easier. Once they feel better when they're having the high flow, then they are much happier. And happy patients are easy patients. It's very clear to a lot of clinicians using it that there's patient benefits. You have a patient group who come in with a higher respiratory rate that settles. You have a patient group that can tolerate their therapy better. You can deliver this higher oxygen whilst moving a patient to a critical environment instead of having to change the therapy for the transfer. I definitely think it's a positive piece of therapy. I think it's really beneficial to patients. So I definitely would recommend the Optiflow.